Well, one, we'll go ahead and get started. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm Dan Sidler, Vice President of the Alliance. I want to thank you for joining us today at our Lunch and Learn presented by our Young Leaders Alliance. Um, as always, we want to take a moment to recognize our Alliance annual sponsors. Uh, both the presidential and executive levels are behind me, if you can see them all. Uh, we thank them for their, for their support. Um, we couldn't do without we couldn't do what we do without them. So so thank you. Now I like um, well again thank you for joining us today. You know it's been a trying year. Uh, we've been trying to adapt ourselves and and you know our routines have been disrupted and that can make for for an easy trap to fall into to build bad habits. Um, but that's one way to look at it. We can also look at it as an opportunity to kind of reflect on ourselves and eliminate some of those bad habits and start building some good ones. So uh, that's why today's program is so important, uh, titled Habits, Pivoting Your Personal, Professional, and Financial Practices in the New Norm. So with that, I want to introduce our two speakers today. We have Devin Dash, consultant of Axiom Strategic Consulting. Uh, he believes businesses have an innate opportunity to make huge redemptive impacts on the communities where they exist. Uh, Sarasota Native, he is a natural coach, working with business owners and their leadership teams to build and execute strategic plans while preserving and strengthening the relationships. Uh, we also have Olga Strelkov, financial advisor at Northwestern Mutual. Olga works with clients on their financial goals, helps them make informed decisions to build their wealth while protecting their family and businesses. She seeks to understand her clients and provide solutions tailored to in their individual needs and desires. Uh, both Devin and Olga are outstanding leaders in our community. They both serve on our uh, Young Leaders Alliance Committee for the Alliance. So, with that, I want to turn it over to Devin and Olga. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Dan. And uh, before Olga gets a word in, I'll just say it's been a, it was been a huge privilege to work with her and prepare this uh, with her. So um, yeah, well, I, so I commend Olga and, and just I'm really grateful for her, her partnership in this. Thank you, Devin. It, it's, been, it's been so much fun as we were preparing for this talk. So thank you for joining us. And we're so happy to be with all of you here today. And we're truly excited to share with you with some ideas and insight on how to thrive in this environment. Now that we find ourselves in very different and quite challenging times for many, how do we continue to not only survive, but thrive and succeed in this, as we say, new normal? And I believe it starts with the idea of what success truly means to you, to you personally, not to your boss, not to someone else, but to you personally. What financial goals do you have? What personal goals do you have? What professional goals do you have? What, is it, what does it truly mean to you? Is it staying in good health? Is it getting education? Is it finding a very good paying job? What is it? The next question is how do you get there? And we live in a society where success has become more about inventing the future. It's more about setting and achieving your goals. And it definitely feels great to accomplish the goal, but oftentimes this idea of becoming successful at some point in the future can get in the way of being present in the moment and being happy on your way there. Mm -hmm. And we know that there have been many, many discussions recently around the topic of winning the day. It's about identifying, building, and implementing daily routines, habits that move you closer to your goals day by day, step by step. It's about finding joy and happiness in the process of achieving your goals through those daily routines. And then thriving becomes more as a result of continuous pursuit of the reward in your daily routine. And it becomes about creating everyday success. So how do we do that? How do we create everyday success? Well, that is a direct result of habits, right? The routines, the disciplines, the things that we find ourselves doing constantly um, that, that give us the opportunity to achieve our goals. Uh, and, and, or achieve the little wins or, or just have joy and, and the satisfaction of doing things well in life. So the first thing we're going to get into when we talk about habits is kind of the neurology. Now, I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a psychologist. Um, so this is very high level theory uh, in regards to exactly what habits are. Um, so how are they formed? And then we're going to get into 
what are the components, the individual parts, uh, the physics of habits and the things that, that make them up? Um, so first and foremost, how are, how are habits formed? Well, the short answer is we don't know. Um, very smart people who are psychologists and are neurologists, um, one including Dr. Kyle Smith, have said habits could be sculpted from multiple disassociable changes in neural activity. So essentially what they're saying, and to, to, to bring scientific term down to lay people terms, is we don't know. But they do know that sometimes there's uh, associated outcomes, right? So I'm going to get this reward if I pursue this routine. Um, and that's an associated outcome. So that's, why ha that's how habits are built. But the other times, we're finding that habits are a result of stimulated, a stimulus response, right? So um, if, you, if you were an ex-cigarette smoker or a cigarette smoker, the smell of nicotine or the smell of tobacco may be a trigger for you to pick up a cigarette and go out and have a smoke. Right, so there's a stimulus response association there. But the connections in the neural activity that happen to, to make that routine form is, is still pretty mysterious to, to most scientists. But through their research, they have broken down habits into three different components. And these components tend to operate together uh, in, a, in a habit routine or a habit cycle. So the first thing is a cue. What is a cue? A cue is a specific signal Think of it like an event, a time, a specific location, or maybe an emotional state, maybe a feeling. It's the trigger that makes you, that, that triggers the routine. The routine is the actual habit or behavior, right, that, that we partake in, whether it's a good habit or a bad habit. The routine is, is the habit that, we, that we, are, we find ourselves wanting to break or continually trying to implement in practice. And that results in the reward. The reward is the desired outcome. It's the craving, um, as a good author, Charles Duhigg, who wrote a really great book that we're gonna recommend called The Power of Habit, he calls it the craving, right? So let, let's think of an example um, from my own life. Um, I, at bedtime, brush my teeth. I don't know how many of you brush your teeth at night. Um, I, I brush my teeth at night. And the, the thing that signals or cues me in to brush my teeth is my alarm clock saying, hey, it's time for you to go to bed if you want so many hours of sleep tonight, right? I'm really thankful for the iPhone app that does that, tells me when to go to bed, or else I find myself doing all sorts of unproductive things far, too far into the night. And so I get up and I go and I brush my teeth. And the reward and the thing that I crave after that is that really nice clean mouth feeling. It may sound odd to you. It's not because I, I care about my personal appearance. It's because I really enjoy going to bed and feeling the, the clean, that clean feeling in my mouth. That's what I crave. And so I, I brush my teeth and it's a habit that most of us um, execute on a daily basis, right? So the cue is the time or the, the alarm clock that says, hey, it's time for bed. The routine is brushing my teeth. And the reward that I crave is that clean mouth feeling. So what do habits have to do with thriving, right? Well, though some can be detrimental to our health, habits are actually pivotal for our ability to efficiently and productively move through life. And habits do this by limiting the amount of uh, brain activity that we have to, to act like, it limits the amount of brain activity that we use to relearn and, and reprocess information. So think about your drive to work. Do you drive the same route every morning? Do you always turn right out of your parking spot or out of your driveway or your parking spot in your condo association or apartment complex? Where do you, do you stop on your way to work? Do you turn the same way into that 7-Eleven or that Wawa and that gas station? Do you go to the gas station on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday? Is it the same day every week? Right? These are all habits and routines that we find ourselves just doing normally. Um, and, and, and it's funny because at my complex, just as an example, I turn right to go to work, but I turn left to go to the mailbox. And I cannot tell you how many times I've had to turn, I've turned right and I had to turn around because I have to drop something off in the mail that morning, but I just naturally turn right every morning to go to work, normally dropping the mail off when I check it the afternoon, in the afternoon, right? So, so a silly habit there that, that I find myself breaking or, or not doing something automatically 
because I'm, I'm not having the normal Q trigger. Um, let me think of something. So, sorry, how do habits help us, like, help us with thriving? Well, they help us achieve these desired outcomes more quickly, right? And we don't have to go, th they, they allow, they free up our brain space for more, um, for deeper thought, right? For more deeper problem solving. So how have, how have habits changed as a result of the pandemic? What if, what if has changed? Well, in reality, everything, right? Cues have changed or they've become really confused, right? We're no longer in our office setting. Most of us, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in the office, that hasn't changed much, but I have had times where I had to work from home, right? Most of you are working from home perhaps right now. We've been forced to incorporate home cues with work cues. Right, so what's an example of this? Every day I come home from work, somewhere between the time of five and 5.30. And that's playtime for my kids just before dinner. And I get home and my daughter, without fail, runs to the door, hugs my leg and says, daddy, play with me. And for me, that is a trigger that I put my bag down and I go eat fake plastic food and I play with her dolls and I, I you know, play with her baby whatever it is like that's it's the routine that i get into and i know about 6 six fifteen, my wife is going to have dinner ready and i don't think about it i just do it and the reward for me there is the satisfaction of, of decompression of playing of enjoying my daughter right and and guess what when i worked from home those cues were confused because it's nine o'clock in the morning and i'm getting ready to sit down for a zoom meeting and my daughter says daddy play with me and my brain goes, oh my goodness, I can't play, but I want to play. This is, this is normal. This is the natural routine that I should go through, right? So cues have become changed. They've, they've changed or they've become confused. Um, and we've also had to marry work cues with home routines. So it's a vice versa relationship there. Our routines have also changed, right? No longer do we commute to and from the office. You think that that's just something you think about every day? I, th I would say most of us have the same route that we take these every day of our lives to work, unless we have, you know, our jobs provide that we have different client meetings at different restaurants or different places. Um, but even then, we take similar routes to those locations. And routines have changed. Some some good routines have changed, but some routines have become really disruptive, right? And I would say. The, the, the routine of being at home at night, right? And, and relaxing and if you have Netflix or you, you watch TV for the evening news, you sit down and you just turn on the news. Well, if your routine is sitting on the couch at night and looking at the news, then, and you do that during the day, you may find yourself in a, in a procrastination cycle where you're watching the news at a time of day when you, you're normally working in the office, right? So routines are getting switched up. And rewards have changed. Rewards have changed in the sense that the relationships and the, and the satisfaction that we get from our relationships with our peers have changed. Um, or maybe it's the leadership that we, we admire and we look up to and we aspire to be like. We don't get to see them on a daily basis. We don't get the pat on the back. We don't get the, the interpersonal communication in the same sense. Uh, you might get it via Zoom, but it's not the same. Um, the rewards have, have become devalued in some sense. I know for me personally, when, I, when it was moving more towards Zoom meetings, uh, we love Zoom meetings. It frees up our time personally at Axiom to work with cl more clients on a daily basis because we're not traveling to and from those meetings and those engagements. But after a while, the value of working via Zoom was devalued and we started seeing less engagement from our clients in those meetings. And, and we ourselves started to get what science has told us is Zoom fatigue, right? So the rewards themselves become devalued, which can change our habits. Um, and then, so I, in all, our rewards, the rewards we get from achieving our goals are either delayed or derailed altogether. So habits are important for thriving, right? And habits are, have been disrupted. The habit cycle has been disrupted. So how do we get back to thriving? The good news is, is has, something, has something largely to do with major life events. Major life events cause the disruption that actually make habit change easier, right? If, you have, if you've had kids or you're married, this is a real easy one for you to understand because when we had kids, 
gone were the days where we went to bed at whatever hour of the night to get up and get ready for work. Our kids have a strict bedtime. And we, by nature of, of being tired, right, and the cue that our kids were finally in bed, we started to relax earlier and go to bed earlier. Um, and the reward was that is from that was when we got up in the middle of the night because the baby was crying or needed a diaper change, it was easy for us to get, get up in the middle of the night. Um, when you're married, right? If you, if you're, for me, it was, I, I don't, I didn't put the toilet seat down, right? But the cue for me was after a while, my wife, I got tired of my wife saying, hey, Devin, put the toilet seat down, right? And then the cue for me was every time I go to the bathroom, you know, you, you just start changing. You just start getting into a new routine. And the reward from that was a much better marriage relationship. Um, so major life events make it absolutely easier for us to change our habits and routines. Um, the last example I'll give for that one is, is a more, more related to buying habits. And this comes directly from the book, The Power of Habit. Uh, Andrew, or I'm sorry, give me, Alan Andresen in 1984 did a study of shopping behavior. And he found that shoppers were li more likely to change their buying habits after a divorce, after they had kids, after they bought a new home, and after major life events happened, after a major health crisis. And the reason this was such a landmark study was because it actually triggered Walmart and Target and all these other major retailers to change the way that they looked at, at buyers and try to anticipate life events that were happening, right? And so the, how do they do that? Well, they, they looked at their buying cues. They looked at the routines that they were getting into. What were they, what were they constantly buying at the store? Right? And so it was very easy at the time for them to say, oh, well, if they're going to change their buying habits, we want to make sure that all of their new buying habits are with us. Because if we can sell diapers and groceries, they're not going to want to go to two stores with new kids if it was a, having a baby. Or if they're buying a home, and we, can, we know if we can get them to buy pillows and bed, bed spreads and lamps and, and all sorts of curtains and new home supplies from us, they're also going to buy these other, these other items for this convenience sake um, because it's the routine of going to a particular store. Um, I'm sorry. So life events make it way easier for thriving, to get back to thriving. But also, what also helps is the habit-breaking framework, right? So what is the habit-breaking framework? Well, instead of figuring out how how the ha what the habit is and just committing and, and you know, committing to yourself over and over and over again, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change. They've identified that if you can pinpoint the routine, if you can identify the actual habit that you want to break, you can understand the reward, that success, that, that internal feeling of success or whatever intrinsic value you get from, from going through that routine. You isolate the cue and you have a plan you can actually break down your habits into their, their individual components and change the routine. So what's the cue for you? What habit has come to your mind as you're thinking through this, this webinar so far, this lunch and learn, what habits are popping into your head that you'd maybe like to change? Maybe they're good ones that you'd like to, to instill and you'd like to continue practicing. Why did you start doing this? What are the, cue, what are the cues? Is it an event? Is it a particular context? Is it a setting? Is it a time or location? Is it an emotional state? Identify the routine, right? Get really, get really specific about what the routine is. Is it um, getting up to, from, your, from your chair and going to the refrigerator if you're working from a home office? Is it, is it getting outside and, and going, on, going on a walk around your neighborhood? Um, and what is it about that routine? Is it, do you walk by the flowers? Do you pick a flower? Do you go on a light jog? Is it hot outside? Is it rainy? Identify the routine, right? And get really specific about all the different factors that are playing into your decisions. Uh, and take note of the, re of the reward, right? Is it, is it, what feeling is it? Is it the distraction of, of uh, the momentary distraction? Is it the physical well-being that you, you crave? Is it the, a better physique if you started exercising? And then isolate the cue and figure out what it is that's triggering you to go and do that thing, right? I know for me, if, if it's going to rain and I know it's going to be a light rain without thunder and lightning in the afternoon, 
that signals to me that it might be a good evening to go on a run. And I don't know why, but, but it's easier to get into that habit and go on a run every time there's a rain for me. And have a plan. Write out when, when, when you understand this cue, say, when I experience this cue, I'm going to do this routine and this is what this is going to be my reward and focus on that plan as opposed to falling back into your old routine. And so each time you experience a new cue, you just go through that routine because you have it written out. It's in front of you. It's written in the top of your journal or, or written in a place that you're going to be continuously looking at. And the last thing I'm going to give Olga an opportunity to talk about is, is the compound effect, the nature of getting back to thriving and doing it well. I'm just going to mention very briefly the concept of compound effect. And Devin, I know we have a beautiful PowerPoint, so if you could share that with us for the practical part, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm not sharing the PowerPoint? Oh, totally. uh, not yet. <laughs> so with that, it comes strictly uh, from the book by um, Darren Hardy, The Compound Effect. And uh, I highly recommend this book. It's very easy read, but that will change your perspective on how to build habits with small changes. And the compound effect is, built, is based on the principle that small consistent actions can yield huge results. And we're just about to get into the practical um, area of our presentation. So let's get into that, Devin. So sincerely apologize, everyone. For, uh, if I will send the slide deck out after this presentation. It was funny because I'm on Zoom every day. Can you guys see the screen now? Can you see the slide? How do we get back to thriving? Yes, we can. So what we feel like is one of the most helpful pieces of this, this Lunch and Learn is giving you guys just a list of helpful new practices, new habits that you can take and try to decide where you're going to implement them into your life. Uh, and Olga and I are just going to jump through these uh, and just take the ones that we, we, we like. Uh, personal and professional, these are kind of a mixture of things that you can, you can start doing that, that apply to both your professional careers and your professional life and also your personal life. Um, the first one comes straight out of St uh, Stephen Covey's book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This is having a one-page plan, having something that you can look to that is sort of a roadmap for where you want to go, right? And, and the key to a one-page plan is not having the end goal, but having things like the why you're doing these things. The big picture, uh, Simon Sinek talks about it in his book, Start With Why, and it's this big idea that you're pursuing, right? Oftentimes we think, oh, it is more money or it is, it is better you know, to be able to provide for my family or the, the, the public recognition of being successful and, and getting sp uh, specific awards or accolades. But the reality is those things are all serving a deeper why, a deeper uh, raison d'etre for, for those who understand that, like the reason for being. Uh, so have a one page plan that outlines your why where you wanna to get to uh, and why that's a mission for you. And, and, and begin with the end in mind. That's the idea is begin with that end in mind from Stephen Covey's book. The next one is uh, have a to-do list, right? Not an email inbox. I have a to-do list right here. It's got uh, probably two to, two to three dozen items on it, some on the front, some on the back that I write in. And, and it's for me, it's, it's kind of, it uh, goes hand in hand with other habits that we have in here, but having a to-do list and not getting, being in my email inbox as my to-do list really helps me to focus on the things that are important for the day, right? And not getting sucked into busy work or, or tasks that are, you know, urgent, but not important or not urgent, but important. Um, it helps me to kind of prioritize what I do on a daily basis so that I'm not becoming, uh, just the, the go for this, go for that from other clients or people that we're working with. Another one I'll mention is a priority tracker. It, this is simply some tool that outlines bigger projects or goals that might take 90 days to accomplish, right? So whether that's a home project or whether that's um, a work project that you're, you're involved in, <clears throat> outline those things in 90-day in, in intervals 
and identify the key steps that are, you're going to need to, to chunk off your list or cross off your list in order to achieve that bigger, bigger goal. This is, that's just an organization habit to get into, to, to understand projects uh, and, and be able to scale out and view projects, but also have the kind of the zoom lens to be able to scale in where you need to. Olga, do you want to touch on some of these? I would like to touch base on um, journaling. So if you want to do the eat that frog first. Sure. Um, so uh, daily planning comes from a book called Eat That Frog, another resource that we recommend. Uh, eat That Frog is a great book if, you have, if you're in the habit of procrastinating, right? And, and the way that uh, the author writes this book is, is breaking down your day into frog-sized bites, right? You have some frogs that are smaller, you have some frogs that are bigger. And it's more often than not, if we're procrastinators and we have a habit of procrastinating, it's more often than not that we procrastinate on the big, ugly frogs that we don't want to touch. But his point in, in setting a daily plan is looking at that ugly frog right in the face and deciding that if I get nothing else done today, I'm going to make progress. I'm going to eat that frog, right? And so a frog is, is kind of a metaphor for a, a to that, a, to do or a task that you really don't want to get involved in or you're not super excited about accomplishing. We know that journaling has been um, having a good impact on us emotionally and mentally. And this also comes from this book, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And he describes um, practicing gratitude and appreciation as the most powerful emotions we can have because they allow us to feel positive about the people and the circumstances around us. So according to this author, anything you appreciate, appreciates in value. You can appreciate your job, you can appreciate your business or your spouse. And he gives a really interesting example. Um, one of the effective ways to appreciate your spouse, for example, is to write down one thing about them that you appreciate every day. And after that, you can give them the book as a gift at the end of the year. This would be a really, really heartfelt expression of what we're grateful for. So journaling, you know, things every day, what brings me joy, what am I grateful for, really will have a good impact on your mental and emotional state. And as far as learning, really just, you know, keep educating yourself on different topics. I am in the financial planning world, so I'm always thinking, what can I educate myself on today? whether it's about how to save for future, how investments work, how can I build my budget so that I'm not, I don't have anxiety, but I have excitement, how can I reach my financial goals? I think about taxes, we know that taxes can be quite confiscatory, so how can I pay attention to that? And we have so much coming at us today through media, through the news, and how can we turn that noise down and focus on one thing and educate ourselves on just one thing. Also wanted to mention here that I came across this app, it's called A Way of Life. It was, um, it was about this concept of practicing continuous goals every day. And it's just a daily checklist of things you want to do. And as you check things off day after day, you create a chain, long chain of green that you would not want to break because if you break one habit, then you have a red there. So it's just this mental state there. And you, my sample list looks like this, no complaining for the day, no sugar, read, write 500 words, family time, 20 minute walk. So it can be anything personal, professional or financial. That's great. So what are some more, um, thanks Olga. Yeah, while you were saying that actually, I thought of a, another item that's not on the list. Um, and it actually has to do with learning and now I forgot it. So um, what was me for, for forget, having something and then forgetting it, but it's okay because it's not on the slide. Um, let's go into the professional habits that, that are, would be helpful for you as you get back into the workplace. Hopefully as we start working back in the office and getting out of home, um, I know for some that is, it's freeing, it's freeing to be able to work from home, but I know, I know there's quite a few who are ready to get back into the office and be connecting with their coworkers. Um, so when you get back to the office, uh, work on the habit of standardized scripts. If you're in any field that requires you to have conversations with people on the phone, build a routine of developing standardized scripts 
for how common conversations will go. And this is a really effective pra practice because the cues are easy, right? They're customer cues that we're getting. They're social cues that we're getting. You have an angry customer, build a script that is a routine that you'll follow if you have an upset customer, right? That outlines hearing the customer, responding to the customer, and figuring out a way to work together to solve the problem, right? That outline, a script that outlines that. Because then the reward is, you know how, like you don't have any more upset customers or you start dealing with conflict uh, and you, you start being assured that conflict is dealt with directly so that you never have that lingering question of, is this client upset? Is this customer still upset? What's, what's gonna happen, with, what's the future of that relationship? So standardized scripts is something that is super good, good practice um, if you're in any sort of field where you have a lot of phone conversations. Schedule around your ideal work week. Okay, this is, uh, I cannot remember where this came from. Uh, it, was, it was a tool that my boss recommended to me when I started at Axiom. Uh, and that's creating, two, you know, having multiple calendars is not a good idea. Google Calendar makes this really easy where you have one calendar devoted to your ideal work week. And what does that mean? Well, it means you outline during the hours of 8.30 and 11, I'm gonna be in client meetings. Or I'm gonna be out in the field prospecting and networking and building business. Um, between the hours of three and five, I'm gonna be in the office following up with phone calls from the previous day or getting through work. And it may change Monday, Tuesday, depending on the day of the week, but setting your ideal work week and then scheduling around it will build that habit of execution and the, the prospect work, the cultivation work to build your business. Um, if you're in a sales role, if you're not in a sales role, you can do the same thing with these meetings that we're gonna be talking about in a second. Tell yourself, this is when I'm gonna work on big, bigger management priorities. These are the times during the week where I'm gonna be meeting with my team members. And you know, I'm not gonna get work done during these times, but that's okay. Because you know you have a time slot tomorrow where the project that's due Friday is gonna get done. Um, so, and the reward there is obviously just free, freeing your mind of clutter and, and feelings of disorganization and, and lack of clarity. Uh, standardize your meeting agendas, right? This is something that is so helpful and you can impl impl implement now with Zoom, right? It's really common. We see it where people get on a Zoom meeting and if there's not a standardized agenda, if there's not a set format, it's very easy for people to read through it. Well, one, there's nothing that's guiding people to say, I should be engaged in this meeting. Um, on our agendas, we have, we have initials pointed where people are going to be engaging. And they know that if I disengage from this meeting, it's gonna show like a sore thumb because I'm expected to contribute at a specific time and specific ways in these different conversations. So setting a routine of standardizing meeting agendas, there's so many different rewards that can come out of that. Again, maybe it's um, cultivating a better culture with your team and the rewards that come from that. Um, and the cue is there's a meeting on the calendar, right? An event at a specific time and a specific location. So set those meeting, standardized meeting agendas. I just mentioned this one uh, previously. It's one calendar. Have one calendar. This used to be a lot harder when you had large desk calendars, but having one calendar and, and setting setting appointments on it, uh, like the Google Calendar or your iPhone app calendar or your Android calendar is, is super helpful. Just making sure that you don't get in the habit of missing meetings or being late to appointments or for, you know, getting, forgetting that meetings are, are on the calendar. Um, that happens, still happens for me a little bit with my home calendar. My wife really likes the wall calendar. And so, you know, there are nights when she'll say, hey, uh, I need you home. And I'm not quite sure what she needs me home for. It's because the event is on the home calendar and it's not on our family calendar. Um, it's on the wall calendar, not in the iPhone. So uh, one calendar is really helpful habit to, to make sure that you're being diligent and, and setting a habit of, of professionalism and being accountable with your appointments. Uh, next one is one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, building the routine of one-on-one -on -one meetings. If you're in a position where you have subordinates, uh, in the past six months, I cannot tell you how many times, how many issues we've seen that are a result of team leaders not communicating with their team members because the context isn't there, right? They're out of the office and they're not really practicing one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings. 
they're meeting once a week to make sure that everyone's staying up with their task, but you're not able to get into those more, more personal conversations with your subordinates that are gonna be so essential to help building strong cultures in your organization. Not just asking about, hey, you said you were gonna get these things done, are they done? But how are you doing? What kind of habits are you, are, are you building better habits? You know, you were, I know you were struggling to be productive as a result of this pandemic, you were going through a lot of uncertainty, but how do we, how do we build you back up and how do we get you back to a better place of, of, of production? Right, so, so building that habit of one-on-one -on -one meetings is gonna be so essential at, at getting the reward of stronger cultures and stronger ties with your team. Uh, another one is listen with intent, right? Build the practice of, if, you're, if your habit is distracted listening, then get in the habit of listening with intent. Identify the cue. You know, maybe for you, it's somebody who knocks on your door and, you know, wants to at, at, get five minutes of your time. Take your phone and put it, on, put it in your desk. If anybody needs to get a hold of you, they will, I promise. It's way too easy to be connected in this day and age. You're not gonna miss some important phone call. You know, you're, you're gonna get the, the messages that you need. But if you put it in your desk, you're going to be able to engage, get the reward of, of that relationship. You're gonna get the reward of understanding this issue and being able to problem solve more efficiently and effectively if, you're, if, you, if you work on the habit of in, listening with intent to get away from distracted listening. Uh, let's move on to some financial habits that you can get into. Very briefly on that, we know that good financial habits involve good discipline. And uh, so keeping the budget is the first one on this list. And a lot of people look at the budget as something restrictive, something that keeps them from doing things. Another way to look at the budget would be how can I work with my money in a way that I can afford my lifestyle today, but I can also save for my financial goals and enjoy uh, my income. Mm -hmm. And keeping the budget is really a way to track the money that goes in and out of your bank account. And crafting the right budget means that you can find that balance. You can find the way to run your lifestyle at the same time, uh, save for your financial goals or perhaps pay down debt and what's important to you here. And there are so many different ways to build a budget. I know Devin has one way of doing it, so I'll save that, save, save that one for you. But the very simple way of building the budget would be just, you know, total everything up that comes into your household a month. Then subtract the expenses that you have to pay every month out. And then you have what, what we call the trade-off pool. And now you get to make a choice what to enjoy and spend for other things than essential things and what to set aside for your financial goals. So this is the most simple way of doing it. And Devin, I'm gonna uh, leave the one for you on a weekly basis. Yeah, so the monthly budget is one tool. I, I actually like the weekly budget. So I get paid on a weekly basis um, and some people it's bi-weekly, but it's really helpful because with subscriptions and you know decide when you pay systems that are pretty much they're across the Verizon, you know, if you have a phone company, they have it, your insurance companies have it now. I know on a weekly basis, what day of the month my bills are coming out. And so for me, keeping a weekly budget helps me to be able to, you know, tell my wife and, and I know when I get paid. So I, every payday, I look at my weekly budget uh, as a good cue and routine to get into. And I'm able to tell my wife when she says, hey, can I buy this particular thing? I can say, you have to wait till next week because we have this, 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 and this coming out. Right, and so because I'm in that habit of knowing exactly what's coming up in the next week or the next two weeks in terms of expenses, it's very easy for me able to be able to say yes or no, or hey, we, we can do this. And, and it gives me actually financial freedom because I'm in the discipline and habit of looking at my budget on a weekly basis. The next one here is pay yourself first. This is a very, very strong concept. It's a personal financial strategy that talks about how to set money aside for your future before other expenses are being paid. And really success comes from adopting the philosophy, this philosophy of paying yourself first and something on some basis, something on some basis, whatever you can and grow into something larger. 
just get in this habit or in this posture of building this habit, I should say, how can I set aside something and pay myself first? Also here, um, if, I would to, if I were to say, if you had a business, how would you treat your business? Now, if you treated your finances as your business, what would you do? Would you know how much comes in and how much goes out? Would you plan ahead? Would you have a rainy day fund? If something happens as major as pandemic, what would you do? Would you manage for the next crisis coming out of this one? So I would really encourage you to start thinking about your finances as your own business and how you would treat that. And pay yourself first really goes hand in hand with the compound effect because doing something on some basis over time will yield huge results. And we talked about learning just a bit and I was, it was on the more on the financial side. Educate yourself, reach out to your tax advisor, reach out to your financial advisor, uh, read online about different topics. This will serve you well. Yeah, we put learning in there twice just because we, I mean, I, I think everybody would agree, but it, it's such, a, such an important part of growing and, and continuing to grow even as leaders. We, we all hopefully would, would attest to the truth that we never stop growing as leaders and, and part of that is learning. Um, so we just felt it important enough to, to develop some routine or some habit of learning. I know for me, it was, I started listening to audiobooks, right? And it was, I get in my car, I, the cue was I turn on my keys and I turn, I sit in my driveway and I turn on Audible and I play whatever book that I'm, I'm listening to for that week or, or the next few days. Um, and that's, that's the routine that I got into to continue learning and get new information into my brain. Um, the next one on the list here is, is cash envelopes. This comes from Dave Ramsey. Um, he's a really well-known, uh, financial advisor and, and, and wealth advisor, he, he's really just um, been so influential in so many people's lives. I want to say he has the most listened to radio show on, on, in the nation or in the world. I don't know. It's, he's huge. Um, but one of his recommendations is cash allowance envelopes. He is um, a proponent of if you have that budget that Oligo is talking about, deciding if I, if I allow myself $300 a month for groceries, then I'm putting that $300 in an envelope and I'm only spending out of that envelope. Now that may be hard in the pandemic, right? When everybody's going cashless and has credit cards, but maybe you, I, I know a good friend of mine has two separate debit cards, right? And one debit card, he transfers money into that account each month, which is his cash allowance. It's up to him to say, I know that I'm going to spend this much on groceries, this much on entertainment, because if he goes a little overboard on entertainment, he's eating ramen noodles for the rest of the month and he doesn't wanna do that. Um, so it is possible in, in the midst of the pandemic to have a cash envelope system where you're able to keep track of your finances and budget wisely. Uh, go ahead, Olga. I was gonna say, we're gonna, we want to leave some time for questions, but uh, I wanted to touch base on this is a good time. We might have more time now. So this is a good time to review your um, spending, create a budget, but also look at what you're spending money on. There could be some, subs some subscriptions that you're not using anymore and you've been paying for this and just not paying attention. So just review that. And also really, really important to check on your finances once in a while and even quarterly. Uh, and I mean, reach out to major agencies to request credit report, you can get a free one once a year from three agencies. And this is really important because the detailed look at your financial history can be used to evaluate not only your application for loans, but also for insurances and even employment. And any errors on the report can hurt your um, score and your ability to qualify for financial perks and the best rates. And by the way, if you discover an error on uh, your report, uh, I know that the liability for correcting the error is on that agency. So as long as you write the letter and submit the documents, uh, they would have to do that for you. And having a rainy day fund, this is really, really important. We talked about treating your finances as a business. What do you think happened, very unfortunately, to the businesses that did not have enough cash reserves coming into the pandemic? So for us, to know that we have a safety net for our family to run our lifestyle, 
becomes really important. So how do we get there? Again, something on some basis, pay yourself first, and the compound effect will happen. So we're coming into the, the airport, I guess, so to speak, to use a landing the plane analogy. And the last thing we want to discuss with you guys before we get into question and answers is an opportunity for you to make it stick. Um, and this is something that is, I, I'm just going to give credit to Olga for, um, but we really want to leverage the power of social media and its ability to connect people um, to give you the opportunity to engage in a commitment over the next 30 days to make some habit change or to implement a new habit, right? And go back to the slides in this deck that I didn't share with you um, and, and identify the cue. What's gonna be the cue that you, you use to, to trigger this new routine? And, and what's the new routine? Or what's the changing routine or the routine that you wanna change? And then what's the reward? Start with the end in mind and tell yourself, this is why I'm going to implement this new routine. And then write that plan out, write it on an index card and keep it in some place that you're, you're going to look at every day. Maybe a dry erase uh, marker on your bathroom mirror that may be taboo to some of you, but it's a great place. It's a place you look every day where you can just keep track of, of things that are important to you. Um, so week one, Dan's going to do this. We're, we're going to do this via Facebook. So plug into the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance Facebook page and decide on a routine that you'd like to change or implement and share that in the comments, right? Create the conversation with, with the people who are in this. E. How many people we got in here, Dan? I think we have 34. 30, 34 participants, right? And, and surely there'll be more to join us. Week two, we're gonna identify our cues. This is just a brainstorming session of saying, hey, these are, I identified some of these cues and I didn't realize these things were triggers. It was this time or this event or, or this location or maybe the feeling of being bored. Um, those are all things that we want you guys to participate in, in a community with. Week three, share your rewards. What's important to you and what you're gonna accomplish and, and achieve? What craving you're gonna satisfy by participating and practicing this new routine? And then week four, we're just gonna give you an opportunity to describe your success. How are you doing? Maybe you need another 30 days. It's okay, because that's, that's compound effect is still in place where if you change one habit over the next 30 days and you commit to then change another habit or implement another habit after that, over, over your lifetime, you're gonna be able to, I mean, let's say 12 habits a year, if you can change and implement 12 new habits a year, um, maybe if you have that many bad ones or you need to develop a lot of good ones, you might develop 12 habits, but over your lifetime, you have plenty of opportunity to start making things stick that are important uh, for particular rewards. And with that, we want to thank you. Uh, these are recommended resources. Um, the Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Darren Hardy's book, The Compound Effect, and then Brian Tracy's book, Eat That Frog. Um, great to listen to on Amazon Audible. Um, you can also find them on Amazon store. With that, uh, give you guys an opportunity to ask questions. I think Dan is going to field some questions for us. Yeah, thanks, Devin. Uh, we have just a few minutes, so we'd love to open it up to the audience for some questions. Uh, if you want to enter those in the chat, we'll make sure that uh, Devin or Olga can address those. And then while we wait on those, I just want to say I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the social media engagement. You know, it's so easy to say I'm going to change a habit, but I think there's a nice bit of accountability there. If you put it out into the world, uh, you know, maybe you're a little more likely to stick with it. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, give another second here. No questions, but a lot of kudos to you guys. Well done. Refresh. Thank you for very nice comments. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you all so much for attending. Thank you, Olga and Devin. Uh, outstanding job. Thank you so much for your efforts in putting this presentation together. Um, really timely and really important to um, think about your habits and your routine at this time. So thank you for your time today.
Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, everyone, for, for the opportunity to serve you and give you this information. Absolutely. And we will send out that PowerPoint. Devin, you were on such a tear, I didn't want to interrupt you, but uh, we'll make sure that everyone in attendance gets that. Um, just a few upcoming announcements. I wanted to share that our Executive Academy, uh, it is going virtual. Uh, registration for that is still open through August 31st. Uh, if you're not familiar with our Executive Academy, that's our annual leadership development program in partnership with Game On Nation. They're a, a, a leadership building team out of Bradenton. They work, work on a national stage. They work with Fortune 500 companies and professional athletes, sports teams. Uh, we're really lucky to get to partner with them and they're just awesome. So that, all, more information on that is on the website. Upcoming events, uh, next Thursday, we are having a virtual wine tasting. Uh, so you can get your wine at Fine Wine and Tastings on Main. Um, get those ahead of time, join us on Zoom, and we'll, we'll have the winemaker of those three wines uh, kind of talking about her process and, and what to, to look for in those wines. On August 27th, we are having a joint event with the YLA and the Alliance. That is gonna be an in-person event uh, at Heritage Harbor. We are gonna have socially distanced networking. So um, if you're eager to get back out there, this is definitely one to look out for. Um, it's open now on the website, you can sign up. Space is limited. We are trying to keep it um, close and safe and make sure everyone is, is comfortable um, to check that out and more announcements on that as well. So uh, again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, Devin, Olga, thank you one more time and uh, everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.